right now over 77. I understand uh, Barry Thornton, one of our storm spotters, is out there on Skype. Uh, and we're going to take his picture. This is a look. I think he's up in Huntersville. Am I correct, guys? Okay, I think he's up in the Huntersville area, actually right near where this storm is. He's got a pretty good view. This is one of our storm spotters looking back to the north and west. And boy, over that tree line, if you look carefully right here, guys, right here, it doesn't. It looks like we've got a little bit of rotation going on right in this area. You can see it moving to the north and east. It's a pretty good view, okay? Because right to the right of your screen, I guarantee it's, it's raining cats and dogs. This is the southwest side of the storm and boy you could see we've got a lot of movement there it's either rotating a little bit or it's just howling we've got either an indraft or an updraft coming in from here or either a downdraft on the back of the storm pushing these clouds forward this is where we're going to watch for rotation right there this is uh, barry thornton he's our storm spotter in huntersville and barry uh, basically is out there looking at this storm from a pretty good view looking back towards this storm from huntersville boy that's an ominous. Let's stay on this picture for a second to see if we can continue to see. Hey, Brad, we're getting reports of a quarter size hail with this system. Yeah, that's always an indication of, of when you have a, a tornadic storm that you have at least uh, some small hail. Also getting some reports out of Mooresville at Shears Road East Fire Station, uh, rotation in the cloud. So that's the number three fire station up there in Mooresville. And they're probably looking back to the south. So now we've got this thing kind of surrounded. We've got some storm spotters north of this storm and others boy look at that that is ominous looking now it's hard to tell because the trees are blocking our view and this is this isn't like your classic chasing out in the, in the northern plains or the central plains where you can actually see things the trees and the power lines obviously blocking our view. boy that is some ominous looking clouds right there looking back to the north and west so this is one of our storm spotters barry thornton he's up there in huntersville keeping an eye on this storm. Let's go back to the radar briefly, guys, because I want to give everyone a perspective on the area we're talking about. It's right here over Huntersville. You can see the storm itself. And while it's raining cats and dogs east of town, if there's a tornado, it's going to be right here in this area. We're just getting reports of damage. We actually, uh, from Belmont, they're saying that trailers were damaged over there at Wiley Loops Police Department over there in Belmont, saying that they just received that. Um, there, now it's kind of the damage control in Gaston County. Yeah, that's the storm started down here towards the Mount Holly, Belmont area, and it's moving to the north and east. So the next areas under the gun is going to be areas between Kannapolis and Concord. So if you're watching us from Kannapolis or Concord, or if you have family or friends, shoot them a text, call them on their cell phones, and hey, if you're not watching TV, go to your basement right now. Go to the lowest level of your house. Do your precautions for a tornado because this is not one of those typical Doppler radar indicated ones where we're seeing rotation on the Doppler. We are seeing some right here on the southwest side of the storm, but we've also had law enforcement and at least two or three storm spotters and damage reported with this storm in parts of Gaston and Mecklenburg County. So if you live in the southern part of Rowan County, the north part of Cabarrus County, all the way to Concord, it's this little corner here. This is the area where the storm in your direction and obviously We've gotten several reports of damage now with this storm, which is never a good thing. That kind of gives you at least confirmation that we are getting at least some damage. And the reports keep coming in of damage uh, in, in the M Belmont area, at least uh, damage to some trailers up in that area. I understand we've got some video just in as well, from, or pictures, excuse me, uh, from Mooresville. This was the first storm that moved through this area. And you can see that is golf ball size hail, at least an inch and a half to inch and three quarter hail that came through with one storm and you don't get hail this large unless you have one of two things, a very tall storm or some very cold air aloft. And today we had all of those come together to produce this large hail. Large hail is often accompanied by tornadoes. Not always, there's always exceptions, but usually there was always large hail with these tornadoes. Let's go back to the radar guys, give you one more look at it because uh, the storm is continuing to move. I'm gonna put the storm tracks back on here. Uh, we'll give it a second to update here and give you an idea of where the storm is going to be heading next because it looks like pretty much southern Rowan County, northern parts of Cabarrus County. Those are the areas that I'm most concerned about. Let me put a storm track on there. Moving northeast now at 40 miles per hour, guys. Here's their track. Kannapolis, 618. Salisbury at 638. And Craven at 646. Let's go back to Bobby. Those are the areas, Bobby, that we're watching right now and that need to be seeking shelter from this storm.
Yeah, Brad, we want to give you some information now about what to do if the storm is approaching your area. As Brad just showed you where it's moving now. If you're in a mobile home, get out and find another place to seek shelter. Very important there because, as Danielle mentioned a moment ago, we had some damage to some mobile homes in Belmont and Gaston County where the storm has already moved through. If you live in a house, go to a room with no windows. If you have a basement, obviously it's safest to go there. Also, crouch down on the floor, cover your head, use some thick blankets or padding to protect your body from flying debris, and remember to stay away from trees and cars. Cars. Again, what Brad and Daniela have been mentioning is that this storm is wrapped in rain, so sometimes it's very difficult for you to look out and actually see that a tornado is approaching where you live. But just trust us, we're already getting reports of damage, especially over in Gaston County. We were hearing of uh, some mobile homes damaged in Belmont, and earlier, police scanner traffic officers responding to the possibility of trees down on houses along Sam Wilson Road in Charlotte. That would be over around 485 and Interstate 85. Here in the newsroom, Brad and Daniela, we continue making calls, uh, trying to find out as uh, fire crews continue to respond. We'll bring you the latest as we get it. We'll go back to you now. I understand you're getting updates from your storm spotters. Yeah, they're coming in pretty fast and furious as we take a look at the radar guys uh, you can see the storm we're tracking once again it's right on the cabarrus mecklenburg county line we've got numerous warnings now essentially for all of these storms that are moving to the I highlight the first one the first one is the one we initially went on the air for that was for cabarrus davidson gaston iredell mecklenburg and rowan county gaston's been pulled out of that because the storm is out of there. There's another warning there for Rowan County till 615, and then another one to the northeast for Davidson till 630. So we've got a couple of storms here, all of them showing signs of rotation, at least on our radar, uh, and they all appear to be have, uh, at least have at least some rotation with them. And at one time, we did have a significant uh, amount of damage reported, essentially at 485 and uh, uh, 74, so at Wilkinson Boulevard. So we. I'm getting numerous reports in, at least from our storm spotters, of funnel clouds everywhere in the northwest part of Mecklenburg County. So we've got damage reports, uh, basically sheds wrapped around power poles, a roof off a building and power lines down. That's basically uh, on the western side of Mecklenburg County, west, west of uh, uptown by about eight miles. Also rotation reported about uh, five to ten minutes ago southwest of Sugar Creek Road and Tryon Street. That's in North Charlotte. That was at 554 from our storm spotter. So this all kind of lines up with our storm track. If we go back uh, about uh, 30 minutes ago, we started getting uh, the first reports in from the Belmont Mount Holly area. That's where we saw some rotation. One of our storm spotters saw some debris. Then we started getting damage reports reports, then law enforcement. Now we're getting reports of funnel clouds right in this area, and it's right on the Mecklenburg Cabarrus County line. Here's your Rowan County line. So if you're in Rowan County, you need to be seeking shelter. So most of Mecklenburg, uh, Gaston County, you can kind of kind of take it easy now. The storm is out of your area, but if you live in the northern part of uh, Cabarrus County, not the southern half, northern part, Concord North, seek shelter. If you live in the whole southern half of Rowan County, basically seek shelter as well. And if you look at 85, it's kind of parallel in 85. So everywhere north and west of 85 is kind of where the storm has been moving. Let's widen out a little bit here to give you an idea of where it's going. We're just getting more reports from some of our storm spotters that rotations reported estimated about five to 10 miles southwest of Sugar Creek Road and Tryon. So as you mentioned, it's just continuing on that track, Brad, just headed out of northern Mecklenburg County up into Cabarrus County. Yeah, here's the leading edge of the storm and you can see a uh, Kannapolis right there. Back to the west, there's our storm. Uh, let me turn just the warnings on here for a second to give you an idea. We'll turn the radar off so you guys can see just the warnings that we have in effect.